Hello, very beautiful beloved soul friends. I am so excited to be here. I am going to share something that just might change your life because learning about it changed mine. Everything I'll be sharing here is stuff that I've taught myself during my Implicit Revelations case study, which is a 20,000 plus hour self-guided research project, basically, that I'm five years into and I continue to dive deeper into it every day. And the intention originally was just to understand and transform my own personal experiences, but then it evolved way beyond that. And I've created dozens, if not hundreds, of brand new modalities to understand and heal body minds while liberating and expanding consciousness. And so the body mind has two jobs, navigation and regulation. And the navigation and regulation of the body mind is restored to its optimal state of well-being while parts of the self are reunified and then they get to be more free to be more of all that they are without restrictions in the body-mind. The body-mind has restrictions if there's a disruption of navigation or regulation, which can happen for a wide variety of reasons, but it all comes back to the well-being of specific internal needs throughout attachment systems that are the foundation of navigation and regulation and the foundation of how the body-mind in the human form and the essence of self as pure consciousness actually merge and intersect through experiences of love. Among the things that we'll be exploring today are independently developed memory centers, and what happens when there's alternate systems of navigation and regulation in the body-mind, and the power of reaching in and directly working with attachment systems to indirectly re-sculpt navigation and regulation, rather than directly working with the thoughts, the feelings, the action patterns, or the different styles of brain wave and brain hemispheric balance and integration and autonomic regulation and stuff. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Once upon a time, there was a self, a soul, a consciousness, and they plop, plopped into this little infant body, okay? So then there's a baby, a human baby that is born. In that moment, there is an abstract potential for a body-mind, but the body-mind has not yet developed. The body-mind doesn't exist with its particulars. The navigation and regulation that that self will experience have not yet been sculpted. And then experiences in relation with attachment well-being, including experiences of social engagement where you're interacting with other people directly or indirectly, like direct social engagement is like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm here and I'm having an interaction with an actual person. Indirect social engagement is like, you're walking through somewhere and you see someone in the distance. Or you're reading a book and you're socially engaging with the author of that book and the characters of that book indirectly. Or you're watching TV or a movie and you're indirectly socially engaging with the actors and the characters in that drama. Um, and so direct social engagement always has a bigger impact but indirect social engagement also has an impact and can vary in terms of its degree, okay? So for example, if someone walks up to you and has direct eye contact and is physically standing in front of you and says something, that will have a stronger impact than if you're reading a message from someone through like an email or social media online and so someone says that same thing. But when you're reading that message, that is still going to have greater impact than if you're like watching a movie and someone you don't know at all is saying something not directly to you. Okay, so direct and indirect social engagement has its variables, but it all comes to how experiences are fulfilling or not fulfilling attachment needs. Okay, and so there's this infant, there's an abstract potential for a brain body blueprint, there's this blueprint of it, and then experiences start to fill in that blueprint and build the house of the body mind. It's not just an idea, it's not just a potential, it becomes an actual solidified body mind. 
But thankfully, we can always re-sculpt our body-mind, so no matter how it was originally sculpted, we always have the power and opportunity to shape-shift these structures that are affecting every nanosecond of experience from the inside out. Okay, so um, let's imagine that this individual went through experiences and there were moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and there were some moments where experiences fulfilled attachment needs in different ways, okay? There's five key elements to understanding the organization of the body-mind. And a big part of it is unconscious memories that carry patterns of feeling and movement. There's more to it, but that's like a huge part of it. <laughs> and the body-mind's purpose is to navigate life and regulate life. Navigation in the body-mind and regulation in the body-mind. Okay? Body-mind. Body-mind. The mind of the body, which is always happening beyond awareness. Okay? When we say mind, that's not what we're talking about. The body-mind isn't something you can directly perceive, which is why I love working with it because it's so fascinating. <laughs> it's affecting us in every moment of every day, but we don't necessarily understand those realities. But when we do, or if we do, life can change because we understand what's happening at a deeper level and we have more power to transform what's happening at a deep, deeper level. And we have the potential to be there for ourselves in a deeper way than ever before. We have a way to show up and shift our experience from the inside out in ways that we maybe didn't have access to or awareness of the potential for before. So there's a lot of power in expanding into the understanding of these concepts. Okay, so in journeying through this example to kind of bring light to this, okay, let's say that this individual has moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and also other experiences where attachment needs are fulfilled in different ways. And to understand the effects of this, we need to look at the five key components of what's affecting the organization of the body-mind that's affecting navigation, which subsequently affects regulation, okay? We're looking primarily at navigation here. <clears throat> and navigation includes thoughts, feelings, action patterns, emotions, sensations, instinctive responses, verbal responses, emotional responses, somatic responses, physical responses, perceptions, perspectives, conclusions, stories, inner dialogue, approach avoidance tendencies, um, habits and movements of the body. Learned motor skills are a type of navigation. If you know how to instinctively type on a computer or ride a bicycle or cook a meal or wash a dish or unload the dishwasher or any of these muscle movements, those are all types of navigation from the body-mind. Okay, so the body-mind has navigation, and it's all of it. It's the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the sensations, the approach of what its tendencies, the habits, the movements, the instinctive responses, um, abilities to feel sensations of familiarity, uh, word associations, and instinctive styles of vernacular, right? So the regulation would be like your ability to actually like physically speak and the fluctuation of the volume and the tone, but then the style of the words that you're actually saying would be navigation, regulation, navigation. And this is all beyond awareness. The conscious mind might be using it through intention, but <laughs> the conscious mind might be using it through intention, but the abilities for it are in the body-mind deep beyond awareness. Right. And there's like, you know, the left brain hemisphere contributing to language centers and the right brain hemisphere contributing to like nonverbal cues. And then like, you know, the prefrontal cortex and the frontal lobe that are allowing for awareness of the experience of it and the conscious intentionality of it rather than it being automatic and maybe jumbled. OK, so navigation regulation affecting us in every moment. Body mind stuff. OK, to understand this, though, there's five key elements that affect the organization of the navigational patterns in the body-mind, okay? Navigational patterns are like, you know, there's a word association. That's one navigational pattern. There's one learned motor skill. That's a navigational pattern. There's one chronic pattern of thought or perception. That's a navigational pattern. There's one chronic pattern of emotion 
whether that's, you know, joy or sadness or whatever it might be, that's a navigational pattern. So there's like, you know, hundreds and thousands and millions and billions and trillions of navigational patterns in the body mind. There's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Being alive is a miracle. Okay. So there's like, infinite amounts of navigational patterns in the body mind we can understand their organization and thus understand their activity beyond awareness through five key elements the first is through explicit and implicit data conscious and unconscious data the fact and the feeling of experience and this includes conscious and unconscious memories and connectivity between the left and right brain hemispheres among infinite potentials but the first key component to understand the navigational patterns of the body mind is explicit and implicit pieces of data obvious and subtle pieces of data the bold blatant obvious fact of it and the subtle implicit sensation of it okay and there's more to it but that's a summary explicit and implicit pieces of data the next is that there's data from every year of life and it was organized in relation with the activity of navigation and regulation in the body mind at that time so the data from ages two and three are going to be organized differently from data at age seven, eight, which are organized differently than data at ages 11, 12, which are organized very differently from data throughout the rest of life. And there's different variables as well, but because the brain was still developing. And so there wasn't a lot of navigation happening automatically and the regulation was still formulating and the brain and the body were still in this developmental phase and there was more right brain activity than normal and the sense of self hadn't developed yet. And so the way that experience was processed and stored is actually gonna be different in those years of life. And then if there were different patterns of navigation and regulation in later years, then that data will be stored differently as well. If, you know, at age 20, you were experiencing like a lot of good regulation and the navigation was okay. And then at age like 23, there was like this big event that happened in life and you were constantly in a state of stress. Then those years are going to have totally different organization of data because the body mind was navigating and regulating existence differently and affecting how experience was being stored and processed, processed and stored. <laughs> okay. And so there's data from every year of life. And the experiences are what create the content of that data. But then there's the question of, is that information connected? Okay. And that's like a whole other thing. Okay. So we don't necessarily know if that data is connected between each of those years, but every year had experience that created content information, including unconscious memories and navigational patterns in the body mind. And it may or may not be connected with each other year of information that was gathered. Okay, so data from every year of life, explicit and implicit pieces of information. <clears throat> the third is specific roles throughout the neurobiological social engagement system of the body mind. And this is a concept that stems from the polyvagal theory. The polyvagal theory. And in the polyvagal theory, there's five different states of autonomic activity and they contribute to roles of social engagement or disengagement and so stress responses at either end high energy low energy stress responses are going to be roles of social disengagement and then there's three states of regulation in the nervous system activity high to low and those are when the body mind is regulated and socially engaged, but in different ways. Okay. If you're competitive and you're running, you're going to be in a different state of regulation than if you're relaxing and chilling, comfy on a sofa by a fireplace, eating your snacks. Okay. And so there's three states of regulation. And then from that, there's roles of social engagement and disengagement. And there's over a dozen of them. Um, and this again is a concept that stems from the polyvagal theory. And so there's these different roles and they have different navigational priorities, emotional intimacy, physical intimacy, emotional well-being, physical well-being, rest and restitution, mutual support, cooperation, parent-child bonding from the perspective of the parent and parent-child bonding from the perspective of the child. There's all these different roles 
of social engagement and they have different navigational priorities. And then there's social disengagement roles, the attach stress response, flight stress response, fight stress response, freeze stress response, fold stress response, high energy blackout stress response, low energy blackout stress response. Low energy is where a dorsal vagal collapse goes to a state of extreme. And the high energy stress response is where there's like dissociative fugue and stuff like that is most likely to happen. And that's where like a fight flight stress response goes to an extreme. And there's total deactivation to the point where everything is happening unconsciously and nothing's being processed because of the dysregulation that's happening in the nervous systems. Okay. And so there's all these different roles that have navigational priorities. And so the way that a fold stress response navigates life is different from the way a flight or fight stress response navigates life. And the way that social engagement roles are navigating life, there's a really loud bird in the background, the way that social, hey, 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 you're not allowed to be louder than me. <laughs> Okay, and so then there's social engagement roles, and they're each going to navigate life differently. Parent-child bonding from the perspective of the parent is going to navigate life a little differently than the role of physical intimacy. And the role of parent-child bonding from the perspective of the child is going to navigate life very differently from the role of physical well-being. And there's some you know, interlap and overplay because hopefully the content of all this data is positively navigating life and it's all connected. So it's able to exchange information throughout all the navigational patterns. But the priority of the roles of social engagement and disengagement in the neurobiological social engagement system of the body and mind are going to have different navigational priorities, different styles of storing information that is then projected into reality to navigate existence from the inside out. And you might get a different style of emotion from parent-child bonding from the perspective of the child than you would get from the role of mutual support and cooperation. And you might get a different sort of emotional connection from the role of emotional intimacy than you might from rest and restitution. Okay? And so there's different navigational roles that have priorities in the neurobiological social engagement system of the body-mind. Again, this particular aspect stems from the polyvagal theory. Each of these pieces stems from different concepts that have been explored through my implicit revelations case study. Okay, so there's explicit and implicit pieces of data. There's data from every year of life. And there's roles of the neurobiological social engagement system that have different navigational priorities beyond awareness. All of this is beyond awareness, okay? And then we have one of my favorite parts, abstract associations of experiential elements. And this is so complex, okay? There's abstract associations of everything you've ever seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched, every emotion you've ever felt, every type of place you've ever been to, every type of person you've ever seen, every person that you've ever known, every place that you've ever been specifically, every concept you've ever learned about, they're all different types of experiential elements that have abstract associations in the navigational patterns of the body-mind. And so if there's like the concept of cat, there might be the concept of fluffy, joy, happiness, maybe the name of a cat that you know, okay? Or there could be the concept of cat and sharp claws, <laughs> sharp teeth, it bit me one time. Like there might be all these different navigational patterns based on the abstract associations of experiential elements. And then you might look at a cat and be like, oh, it's so cute and fluffy. Or you might look at a cat and be like, oh my God, get the thing away from me, right? Patterns of feeling and movement in the body-mind being projected into navigation beyond awareness, but affecting every moment within what you can perceive.
even if you don't know like exactly why it's happening, which is why I'm here because I love to shed light on this stuff and I love sharing all this magic and I love connecting with you magical beings. Um, and feel free to explore my work deeper. I have lots of free libraries, but then I also have deeper dives through sacred soul sessions, personal connections with me either one time or through a multi-month personalized program where we connect every week or so for several months and use a bunch of different concepts combined to achieve your specific intention. And then there's also Loving Liberation launch pads, which are self-guided programs. They're content creations through videos and playbooks. And you use these ideas on your own time at your own way. And it's fun and enjoyable and creates true transformation beyond anything you can imagine. I also have a merchandise store if you want to go more low key. <laughs> different mantras and stuff. Um, but feel free to dive deeper into my work because I really do love sharing this and the value of it is beyond anything you can imagine. Because when you can understand and transform these realities and, and restore the body, mind, well-being and reunify with all parts of you that you didn't even know you weren't unified with, everything in life can get better and more beautiful and wondrous. And implicit health challenges can resolve and relationships can be more deep and you can be more connected with all of you and sensory processing becomes more heavenly and paradisal and you can be more connected with all of you to go after those dreams and ambitions you might have. There's just so much benefit to investing in yourself in this way, to restore the body mind, to reunify with your parts of the self, to liberate and expand the essence of your true beingness and to uplift the navigation and regulation of the body mind so that it can be this miraculous vessel of light that it is intended to be. Okay, so explicit implicit pieces of data, data from every year of life, roles of the neurobiological social engagement system with distinct navigational priorities, abstract associations of experiential elements, Every type of element of experience, tractors, <laughs> shirts, clothes, <laughs> um, lights, cats, dogs, the sound of crickets, trees, like literally anything and everything that could ever exist, real or imagined, any concept, anything you can see, smell, taste, touch, sense, uh, emotions, concepts, learned things, abstract word associations has created data of these experiential elements through abstract associations within the navigational patterns of the body-mind. The fifth and final element that we explore to understand this stuff is how the self associates with the self and thus how the body-mind associates with all components of reality. And this is something that has especially come up in my Mirathon. So this particular concept was something that developed through the Implicit Revolutions case study. I think it's thesis number 30 or something <laughs> uh, when I was still sharing Implicit Revelations by numbers and then I, and then I stopped doing that. <laughs> I just share Implicit Revelations without numbers. But when I was still doing the numbers, I think it was number 30. Um, how the body-mind associates with all components of reality is first determined by how it is associating with itself through the navigational structures of the body-mind. So if you want to shift the way the self is subconsciously or unconsciously associating with something outside of it, you have to first shift how it is associating with its own self inside of its own body-mind, okay? As the body-mind assists consciousness in interpreting and projecting into reality. Okay, so there's these five components, and those help us understand the navigational structures of the body-mind, okay? And throughout all of that, there's two elements. There's content, the information, and connectivity, how that information is able to connect, communicate, and collaborate with all the other information, okay? So how explicit and implicit pieces of data are connecting, how data from every year of life are connecting, how data throughout all the different roles of the neurobiological social engagement system are connecting, how data throughout all the abstract associations of experiential elements are connecting, and how data throughout all the self-associations and subconscious associations with other components of reality are connecting, okay? Which mainly is self-associations primarily because everything else is secondary in that one. And so there's content information in all of these and then connectivity throughout each of these five elements of the navigational structures of the body mind. Okay, now let's get into it. Okay, so 
there's this infant, right? Consciousness comes into the body mind and is like, what's up? I'm brand new here. I don't, I don't know nothing because like I forget my infinite self and the body mind hasn't developed yet. So what's up? Like I'm a human baby. And then experience comes in, attachment development comes in and experiences in relation with the well-being of fulfilling an internal attachment needs throughout these different systems of the body mind are what create the content and connectivity of all this data. And it also develops the regulatory protocols of brain hemispheres, uh, brain lobes and regions, brain waves, nervous systems, cranial nerves, the endocrine system, digestion, respiration, everything. There's moments of unfulfilled attachment needs. And when that happens, the content doesn't have really good navigational patterns. Not good navigational patterns when moments of experience don't have the fulfillment of attachment needs and that data isn't connecting with all the other data so low vibrational content low vibrational connectivity when there's moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and then there's something of what we call islands body mind islands and so let's say that this is all of the data that is from experiences of attachment need fulfillment and it's been, it's been really good. And there's been lots of love, lots of love, lots of love. And there's really good content, really good connectivity. All the content has navigational patterns that are really effective. Beautiful thoughts, beautiful feelings, beautiful habits, the ability to have learned motor skills, good responses, good interactions, good ability for navigation. And all that data is connected. But then... There are moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and the content doesn't have good navigational patterns and it's not connected with the rest of the data. So then you get these islands. Okay, and then you have all these islands. And so this is the body mind, but then in the body mind are parts of the self. So then there are parts of the self on that main, main body mind landmass <laughs> and they're all connected with each other. They're unified within the essence of self. But then there are parts of the self on each of these islands and they're stuck in this data that isn't navigating life very well and they're not able to connect with all these other parts of the self, okay? And that can reduce the quality of life, but a lot of times we don't immediately know about it because it's just what we've known as normal. But there's nothing normal about not feeling joyfully alive in every moment of your life. There's nothing normal about not being in love with your the, the gift of smelling a flower. There's nothing normal about not being in awe that the sky is freaking blue. There's nothing normal about not getting to know what it feels like to be fully connected with your body. And so we need to break the fallacy of what is the standard of normal and know that we deserve more than that. We deserve to be fully connected with our body mind body spirit unification we deserve to feel joy every day we deserve to feel freedom in the cells of our body we deserve to have thoughts and feelings and emotions and habits that support our well-being and the the things that bring us to life you know the things that set our heart and soul on fire we deserve to feel a deep sense of connection with ourselves and with every little component of reality we deserve to live in a body mind that supports the opportunity to live happily ever after in every moment of every day for our lives. Our lives are meant to be beautiful divine expressions. And so we, we can move beyond what has felt normal and know that when we start to shape shift the body mind structures, reunify parts of the self, restore these systems of navigation and regulation, life becomes more full because the body mind has better systems of navigation and regulation and because more parts of the self are connected with the self through love in a present moment than that than had they've ever known before okay and and it changes the quality of life it changes the flavor of life even if the particulars of life don't necessarily change or maybe not right away the flavor of life changes because the body mind is assisting you in navigating and regulating each moment more effectively and there's more of the self present to actually experience that and that matters more than anything okay so there's moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and then there's islands that form okay but then there's also moments 
that stimulate the fulfillment of attachment needs in different ways, in different ways. And so attachment needs are technically being fulfilled in those experiences, but conditionally from different sources in alternate methods. Meaning if you think, feel, or behave, or act, or something, and basically the body mind is navigating and regulating life in a certain way to project reality for consciousness in this one scenario, maybe around this one group of people in a social engagement experience, then attachment needs are fulfilled. But if you engage in that exact same way in this different scenario, maybe with different people, then those attachment needs are not fulfilled. And this is a really obvious example is when you're like in out adolescence and like early teenagehood or so. And, you know, the way that you behave or think or feel or express or navigate existence around, you know, parents and authority figures might be very different from the way you act, think, feel, uh, you know, express yourself, navigate life around peers. Okay, so that's like an obvious example, okay? If you do certain things around authority figures, you're seen and loved and respected and embraced and supported. And if you do different sort of things around peers, then you get those feelings fulfilled is an example, okay? So then there's experiences that fulfill attachment needs in completely different ways, which shape shifts the navigational activity. So then you have these other land masses and they're they're kind of they're kind of love as 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 a dotted heart <laughs> they're they're kind of love they're, the attachment needs are fulfilled but the content and connectivity isn't isn't quite up to par with with here okay so these are unfulfilled attachment needs these are fulfilled attachment needs super well these are conditionally fulfilled attachment needs in alternate ways, okay? So then there's still these different land masses, and they might navigate life okay, but it's going to be in different styles, and it's going to have different information, okay? So within each of these land masses, if you will, of the body-mind, which are regions of data, there's different styles of content, information, including unconscious memories, that have navigational patterns, and just like we mentioned before, navigation includes thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, uh, somatic sensations, um, feelings-based responses, emotional responses, somatic responses, verbal responses, physical responses, uh, action pattern responses, uh, gut feelings, gut responses, um, different styles of speaking and word associations, like maybe you have a phrase that you say all the time, uh, the ability to respond to your own name being said or spoken, or if you have a nickname or something, the ability to navigate responding and associating with that word or that phrase uh, that is your name or nickname. <clears throat> um, Habits, action patterns, approach avoidance, tendencies, survival responses, learned motor skills, the ability to feel sensations of familiarity. All of these are different styles of navigation, and each of them has different navigational patterns in relation with those five things we talked about. Explicit, implicit, data from every year of life, roles of the neurobiological social engagement system with different navigational priorities, abstract associations of experiential elements, and self-associations, which thus affects how the body-mind is instinctively associating with all other components of reality. And so all of that content is stored in these islands, okay? This will have really good navigational patterns. This will have less good but still functional navigational patterns. And these will have navigational patterns that aren't very functional. <clears throat> but then they're not connected. What happens when they're not connected? When they're activated they'll be activated independently of one another. And then there's something really miraculous in the body-mind that I discovered through the Implicit Revelations case study, and that is the correlation between the navigation and regulation of the body-mind. And this is something that is applied, uh, was originally applied in one of the earlier thesis statements of my Implicit Revelations case study shared through my known documentary series, which is available in a free gift, a summary guide playbook. Um, and then now I use it in the navigation regulation correlation method. <laughs> it's the navigation regulation correlation method. And I use this in a lot of different ways in a lot of different areas of my work, especially through sacred soul sessions, uh, including but not limited to the healing journey magic where we transform an implicit health challenge through these concepts and techniques and practices. 
Okay, so navigation and regulation are constantly affecting each other and it always comes back to the well-being of specific internal needs of attachment systems but when there's navigation being projected and activated it's going to affect regulation and when there's a regulation it's going to affect navigation so if there's dysregulation already happening you're more likely to have a disruption of navigation and if everything's really regulated, but there's a disruption of navigation, you're more likely to experience dysregulation. And so there's a direct correlation between the activity of the mind of the body mind and the body of the body mind. Okay. The regulation of very unconsciousness and the navigation of kind of the subconsciousness, if you want to call it that. What can happen here is that each of these regions of data can actually connect with a totally different style of brain body regulation, which means that cranial nerve functionality, brain waves, prefrontal cortex activation, <clears throat> frontal lobe engagement, activity and regulation of the Mohawk of self awareness, which references Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. Regulation throughout and connectivity throughout inner and outer realities, the mind and the body, the forebrain and the hindbrain. Regulation and activity, engagement, activations throughout all of the different nervous systems, the autonomic nervous system, the somatic and teric periphery, the central nervous system, the cranial nerves, all these different things, digestion, respiration, heart rate variability, the natural ability to intake oxygen and for cerebral spinal fluid to flow, cranial nerves that affect facial postures and expressions. All of these different styles of regulation could actually be different when this region of the body mind is activated versus this region versus this region. Plus, the navigation is different. And so when you're here, everything might be hunky-dory, everything's all regulated, everything's all being navigated, and you're like, life is good, I'm me, I know who I am, I connect, I do this, I do that. And then this comes up, and suddenly you're making choices that are different than what you're used to. And suddenly you have emotional responses that are different than you're used to. And suddenly you're listening to different kinds of music, or maybe doing your hair differently than you're used to. And you're like, what's going on? There's just these subtle changes. You don't know that it's because different regions of the body-mind are navigating life totally differently than what you're used to. And then some other stimulating experience comes in and activates this region of data or this region of data. And suddenly, there's this massive disruption of navigation and regulation and you don't feel like yourself anymore. And you don't know why. You don't know why. You have no idea what's going on. And the obvious thing is, well, there is this stimulating experience, so it must have been, you know, because I was around that person, and they're the reason that I don't feel like myself. But it's never actually the stimulus. It's always actually the body-mind structures being activated by stimulus. And so the stimulus and the experience and the obvious things you notice are a teeny tiny clue of what's actually happening deeper within. And that is my focus, is exploring the 99.08% of inner realities happening beyond awareness, deep in the body-mind, beyond what we can immediately perceive, especially unconscious memories affecting navigation and regulation, and these navigational patterns of the body-mind flowing throughout trillions of networks, and their correlation, activity, and relationship with the well-being of attachment systems and specific internal needs. And that's a big focus of my work. And that is expressed through all of my offerings, including my Sacred Soul Sessions and Loving Liberation Launch Pads. So whether you are interested in a one-time session with me or a multi-month personalized program with ongoing connection calls with me or a self-guided course creation, a short one or a long one, there's a lot of variety. This is a big concept, not this particularly, but this concept of the navigation of the body-mind affecting regulation and having its foundation in specific internal needs of attachment systems and how the self is actually distinct from all of this and thus has power to influence it. So then here's the next miraculous thing. And again, all of this is stuff that I've taught myself and learned on my own through my Implicit Revelations case study. And it explained decades of experiences that never otherwise made sense and gave me infinite opportunity to transform it in the most beautiful way imaginable. So I'm very excited to share this with you um, because they're really, really complex concepts, but boiled down into simplicity. And they're really, really relevant concepts because they're 
They're affecting billions of people across the planet every day, but we don't necessarily understand these hidden inner realities. But if we did, life could change in some really beautiful and positive, empowering ways. Okay, so stick with me here. The next thing that happens is every time a region of data is activated, new experience is being stored in that island without connection to other islands and with a transmutation of energetic content exclusively existing within that body-mind island. Because with every activation, data is being rewritten. So when data over here is activated and navigating life beyond awareness, what exists there already is being rewired automatically by the new experience. Plus, the new experience is creating additional information that is then stored in that island. Okay, so there's two things happening there. The existing data is being automatically re rewired, and the new experience is adding new information. That's the content. But then, in addition, it doesn't have connection with the other islands because it's this region of data, not the other regions. They're usually activated independently of one another. And that's the whole thing. They don't have connection. If they all had connection, then they'd all be activated together. But because they don't, the activation is like, okay, this region of data is engaged. Okay, now we're over here. Okay, now we're over here. But not all of them are contributing to experience simultaneously in the same way. Okay? And so then there's no connectivity of that experience. So if an experience happens and is stored here, then the parts of the self who are in this region of data will not know about that information. And to its most extreme degrees, there can be amnesic barriers between parts of the self and like dissociative or personality type disorders. They're not disorders, they're actually unique order of wiring in the neurobiological social engagement system of the body-mind. There's profound order. <laughs> There's nothing disordered about it. There's profound order. It's just a unique order. It's a disruption of the order. There's a unique organization of that data. But if an experience happens and this island is contributing to navigation and then that new experience stores its data on this island, then this island won't have connection with that information. And these parts of the self won't know about those other parts of the self and won't necessarily know about that experience. And again, this happens to different degrees of intensity. Um, you might consciously know about the experience, but the information in the navigational patterns won't be affecting you, okay? And that's a more subtle way. And so then, you know, if you're over here, you might consciously be aware of that island, but the navigational patterns in it are not going to be affecting these parts of the self because they're stimulated at alternate times in alternate ways. Okay, and so then the content and connectivity is growing in independency of its activations. There's more and more autonomy throughout these islands as experience contributes to them independently. And so they might start off as little islands that aren't very big and maybe aren't very far away from that main land mass. Okay, in this analogy. So you got like your main land mass, which is this guy right here. And then you've got these little islands and they're really small, like, like one palm tree fits on them and that's all that there is. They're just really tiny islands, okay? There's just like, you know, there's one person on it and it's just this tiny land mass. And there's just like one palm tree, it's so small. And it's really close to this island so it can actually see the island totally clearly. It can wave at the people on the main land mass. But then as experience activates these islands, including further moments of unfulfilled attachment needs contributing to the development of islands and existing islands being activated independently to navigate moments regardless of attachment while being within them. There's more and more content in them and less and less connectivity with the main landmass. So then it's getting bigger and it's getting farther away. It's getting bigger and it's getting farther away. And there's more and more people living on it, more and more parts of the self on this independent island. And it's so far away from that landmass, it can't see it anymore. It actually has no idea that it exists at all. It has no idea that that main landmass even exists anymore. Distant memory. <laughs>
but memories navigate life. So it's not even in a distant memory. <laughs> okay. All right. You with me? This is like fireworks exploding with knowledge and insight, right? Okay. So it might start as a little landmass. There's just a minor moment of unfulfilled attachment needs. You just got lost in a store one time when you were a child. And then life went on and all of your attachment needs were met. It was just that one time. It was just that one thing that was said. It's just a tiny landmass, a tiny island. And it's so close to the main landmass of all the rest of your navigation that the parts of the self can see those other parts and wave. Like you're so close. But then every time that island is activated, every time there's this unfulfilled attachment needs that correlates with that navigation, the island gets bigger, the content expands, and it's getting farther and farther away, less and less connected, to the point where it's a giant, giant island with thousands of people living on it, thousands of parts of the self, and it cannot see that main landmass. It has no idea that there are those other parts of the self at all. Okay. And again, regulation and navigation correlate. So then there might be a really intensely different way of experiencing brain body regulation when this island is activated with all these parts of the self than when this main landmass is activated with all these parts of the self. And you might actually feel like a completely different self living in a totally different body because the navigation and regulation of the body mind are operating in a 100% different way, okay? And this can affect life in so many different ways from like, you know, being in a relationship with someone and feeling like a different person in certain times and then having it being, you know, disrupted. Like you can only really feel close with them when this is happening, but then if this happens, you don't feel a connection with them. Um, it can affect different things of the way you're investing or even access to information. Like maybe you um, have a job or something, you're doing some form of work and giving value and contribution to the world. And sometimes you're really sharp and you know it all and you're just on the ball. And then other times you're like not so sure. And you're like, I actually can't remember that at all because the navigation regulation is different. And you can't reach that other information that helps you navigate that information and those aspects of yourself. Um, so it can come up in so many different ways. Uh, e eating food is, is an example. You know, maybe sometimes you don't have an appetite and you can't eat at all. Maybe sometimes you're binge eating and you're just like, oh my God, I could eat for days and never stop and just enjoy this forever. Maybe sometimes you fully taste every sensation. Maybe sometimes you barely notice that there's food in your mouth and, and then it's gone different styles of navigation and regulation affecting everyday life, okay? So it can come up in very subtle ways that might just decrease the profoundness of sensory processing. You might not be able to enjoy sensory processing quite as much, like little subtle things. Or it could be really intense and severe and you're like feel like a totally different person in different situations around different people and it's disrupting the ability to do the work that you love to do or connect with the people that you love to connect with or enjoy the things that you love to enjoy. And so then every time the islands are being activated, that information's growing bigger and farther away, and there might be more intensive, alternate, independent activity in the navigation and regulation of the body-mind, okay? And this can happen throughout all of life, right? It starts during early childhood, and there might be these subtle moments, you know? Someone was late to pick you up from somewhere, and you didn't feel seen and loved and supported and respected and provided for, for an hour or whatever it was until someone came and got you and then everything else was okay, right? Or, um, you know, you, you didn't have this one thing that you needed or you didn't get this one thing that you wanted or you got picked last for a team or like there's, they, they can be pretty subtle things. They don't have to be like this big capital T trauma. They can be, but they can be really subtle moments. Or things fulfilling your attachment needs in different ways. Like you're in adolescence and when you're around authority figures, you receive the feeling of being seen and loved and supported and safe and secure and respected, protected, provided for, respected, embraced with opportunity to thrive when you behave in a certain way. But then you receive the same emotional fulfillment and the same style of fulfillment in the way that the body is learning how to think, feel, move, and have its being navigate and regulate its existence when you're around peers, when you are like a totally different sense of you. 
and that attachment needs are being fulfilled conditionally from alternate sources in opposing or contradictory ways, which was these islands, right? This one, this one, and this one. And then the more that that happens, right? Like this could go on for years, right? Maybe ages like 12 to 18, for example, in this, in this hypothetical example. And then those islands are getting really big <laughs> and really far away from each other. And then the way that you navigate emotional intimacy could be really different from the way you navigate physical well-being. Or the explicit, implicit data could be really distant. And sometimes you're in the fact of experience. And sometimes you're in the feeling of experience, but you can't necessarily have both. Or the data from every year of life might not be connected. And the information from ages 7, 8, and 9 might feel like you don't even know who that was by the time you're 14 years old. And by the time you're 16 years old, the you at 14 is like, I don't even know who that is. There's no connection between that data or those parts of the self. Or there could be just uh, disconnection or independent activations in data of abstract associations of experiential elements. Maybe you have this object and when you're in one region of data, you're like, oh my God, I remember this thing. This was such a wonderful thing. I'm, I love this thing. I'm so grateful I have this thing. And then you're in this different region of data and you look at that thing and you're like, why do I even have that thing anymore? It's worthless. Like, it's just so pointless. I don't even, I should probably get rid of that. Okay. And it can be really subtle as it's beginning. But then the more that it happens, the more moments of unfulfilled attachment is there. The more moments where experience is fulfilling attachment needs conditionally from alternate sources in contradictory ways, the more that the islands are being activated independently and now navigating life and now new experiences are contributing to that information, the more that it happens, the more those islands grow. The more islands there are, the bigger the islands are, the farther away the islands are in the information in the body-mind. And this is all flowing throughout trillions of networks, right? Trillions. <laughs> and if all those networks are connected, then it's one giant landmass. But with how many things could happen in life and with how vast and complex and infinite this are, there might be tens of thousands of islands in the body-mind. help these parts of the self and help all these body mind islands if there's tens of thousands of islands housing billions and trillions of self aspects okay or even if there's like 500 <laughs> islands okay and they're all affecting different parts of the self how can we help improve the content and expand the connectivity throughout all these trillions of networks that have data that isn't optimal navigation because of past moments of unfulfilled attachment needs and data that's not able to effectively connect, communicate, and collaborate with all that other data and 
that navigation might potentially be having totally different styles of brain body regulation or even subtle different styles of brain body regulation. A subtle example of that would be posing differently for different pictures and the way your facial muscles engage are different. And this is like a really subtle thing. So the posture would be navigation, but then the ability for regulation to support that physically would be regulation. Okay? Or different styles of speaking. Maybe sometimes you speak very soft and really quietly and maybe a little bit slow. And then other times you speak very loudly and boldly and confidently. Regulation is affecting that. Okay, so it could be really, really, really subtle. <laughs> and again, this is flowing throughout trillions of networks. So there could be literally billions of independent islands, just depending on how experience has created this data. Because any moment of unfulfilled attachment needs, any moment where an experience is fulfilling needs, attachment needs in different ways, and it's conditional, it's not through unconditional love, then there can be these islands that form. And there could be a lot of little islands, or there could be like a few islands that are like really big and really far away from each other. And they're kind of equally intense, because if there's a lot of small islands that are close to the main landmass, versus just a few islands, but they're really big and really far away from each other, that's still like an equal amount of information in the body-mind that's not navigating and regulating life in a unified way, an equal amount of the parts of the self that aren't connected with the rest of the self, okay? So when something like this happens, which is like most of the human experience at this point in our evolution, one day it won't be, and one day there will just be unconditional love and attachment needs fulfillment and self-unity, and that's just the way normalcy will be. But at this point in our human evolution, this is pretty normal. Having different islands in the body-mind is pretty normal. Having moments where you're not seen and loved at some point in your life is pretty normal. Having moments where you don't feel totally respected and embraced for who you really are is normal. It's just, it, sometimes it just happens in life. And sometimes it just happens in life. And then if it becomes normal, then it happens more because it's normal. And the body-mind is navigating, regulating life in relation with that, okay? So if this happens, which again is like, you know, happening on planet Earth, a really big planet for like millions and billions of people every day, unfortunately. <laughs> but one day we'll evolve beyond that and just be only unconditional love. When this happens, what on Earth do we do? How do we improve the content and expand the connectivity? How do we help reunify these parts of the self? How do we help all these different islands connect with each other and have information that has the best type of navigation so that the self can experience its own unconditional love? How do we do that? Okay. One way we could go in and we could look at all the different experiences that created the islands. But I'll tell you right now, that doesn't work very well which is why a lot of traditional approaches don't work very well. If you're looking at past experiences, you're not going to be able to transform the way the body-mind is navigating and regulating life now. There might be a few exceptions, maybe a few techniques in a few specific scenarios, but that's not the case and it can really, really work. But on a generalized scale, looking at past experiences that created this data isn't going to change the data. Okay, most techniques that look at the past and how it already exists in the body mind isn't going to transform it, transmute it, shape shift it. If anything, it's just going to grow that data even more. And you're going to go in, you're going to be activating an island, and by looking at all of its navigation and the memory stored in it, you're just going to grow that data, and the island's going to get bigger and farther away. But that's not something that's necessarily known about. And so well-meaning approaches could backfire and not provide the transformation that you're looking for. So it's important to understand these insights and know what approach, what technique, what method, what avenue for the healing journey of loving liberation will actually fulfill your intentions. Okay, so that's one way you could go about it. Another way you could go about it is you could look at 
the navigational patterns in the body mind. And this is a step closer in the right direction because then you're looking inward at presently existing data rather than outward at past experiences. You see the shift? If you look at the navigational patterns of the body mind, you're turning inward to presently existing information in the body mind rather than looking outward at experiences that aren't happening anymore. So that is a step in the right direction. But if there's 500 islands or 500,000 islands or 5 million islands or 500 million islands or 5 billion islands, which is something I have a lot of experience with because that's how many islands were in my body mind a few years ago. So I have a lot of experience with these independent activations in the body mind. And being alive is a miracle. If you have five billion independent islands in the body mind, it's five billion regions of data of parts of the self that aren't connected with each other and aren't understanding interpretations of reality in totally different ways. And that can make life really challenging and really reduce the quality of life. And so we want to be able to help these parts of the self. We want to be able to be there for these parts of the self. We want to be able to upgrade these systems. We want to improve the content and expand the connectivity in an effective and enjoyable way. Looking at the navigational patterns is especially helpful when you're trying to shapeshift specific regions of navigational patterns. For example, if there is an implicit health challenge, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, insomnia, night terrors, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, structural dissociation, borderline personality disorder, dissociative disorders, obsessive compulsions, anything, intermittent explosive disorder, trichotillomania, dermatillomania. If there's any type of implicit health challenge, one that is described in an explicit way or one that's not, and there's just a chronic pattern of thinking that you want to change or a chronic pattern of feeling and emotion that you want to shift or a chronic pattern of dysregulation or disruption of navigation or unique or alternate navigation where you have disruptions in relational connections because you feel like a different person around different sorts of people or around one person at different times, okay? Any type of implicit health challenge or a disruption of implicit health, a disruption of navigation and or regulation, and you wanna really hone in on a specific region of energetic data, a specific region of information in these navigational patterns and pinpoint it to shapeshift it, transmute it and resculpt it, then it's helpful to look at individual regions of navigational patterns without looking at everything happening in the entire body mind, okay? And so instead of looking at memories or past experiences that created the data that's existing now as navigational structures in the body mind, we actually look at the patterns of navigation existing right here, right now, and the patterns that they carry. And this includes looking at unconscious memories and the five elements of these navigational patterns in the body mind that we mentioned, explicit, implicit, uh, data from every year of life, roles of the neurobiological social engagement system with distinct navigational priorities, abstract associations of experiential elements and self associations and the content and connectivity within and throughout all these five different elements, okay? So we can look at very specific regions of navigational patterns. But what if there's islands in terms of like hundreds or hundreds of thousands or millions or billions, okay? If there's trillions of complex networks and any moment of not feeling seen and loved, any moment 
of not feeling celebrated, any moment of not feeling totally safe and secure, any moment of not feeling protected and provided for, any moment of not feeling connected and supported, any moment of not feeling totally vulnerable and close and connected and like there's collaboration and this like sense of support and vulnerability and closeness. Any moment of not feeling respected, any moment of not feeling embraced for who you are, any moment where you don't have directional guidance and you're just like, oh my God, like what's going on? What do I do? What's my next move? Like, I, I have no idea what's happening. Any moment where you don't have a sense of opportunity, where there's not a space to just like be yourself or, or do what you feel like you need to do or want to do. Okay. Any moment like this throughout any period of life. And especially if it happens during early childhood, especially if it happens chronically, especially if it happens severely, okay? But any moment like that can create an island. And then the more that that happens, the more islands there are, and the more intense it is, or the more chronically those are activated, then the bigger the island gets and the farther the island is away from that main landmass of navigational structures in the body-mind and parts of the self. Okay, so um, let's say there's like 100 to like 100 billion <laughs> different islands in the body mind. And I'm speaking from extensive personal experience. The reason I'm so passionate about these topics is because very unique experiences led to there being literally hundreds of thousands and millions of independent islands in my body mind. And so then it's like, okay, well, how do you reconstruct all of them simultaneously in an effective way that you can enjoy enough that you want to show up for the work that requires to actually achieve what you're trying to achieve and re-sculpt the content and connectivity of all of the trillions of energetic pathways in the body-mind? How could you do that? How is that possible? Is it possible? Is there a way to do that? Okay. Yes. And that is one of the things I'm most passionate about. When you work directly with the systems of attachments, the systems of internal needs of attachment systems, especially through social self-engagement practices, The power of consciousness re-sculpts the foundation of the body-mind and it actually shapeshifts all body-mind structures indirectly. And so if we have this main landmass and there's like all these different islands and there's like other miniature primary land masses where experiences have created a felt sense of attachment need fulfillment in different ways and contradictory ways or whatever from different sources and you've got all these different islands okay let's imagine that there's literally hundreds of islands the goal i mean depending on who you are where you're at and what your personal intention is but in theory <laughs> the goal is to help improve content and expand connectivity so that parts of the self can be more unified throughout the self and so that all of the parts of the self who are now getting to know each other have access to a body-mind that supports the best styles of navigation and regulation, okay? And that might look different for different people. But that's kind of the, the summarized goal. You want to improve content and expand connectivity throughout trillions of energetic pathways in the body-mind to improve and expand the well-being of navigation and regulation so that all of the different parts of the self have greater connection with each other and more opportunities to experience life from a space of thriving and well-being. And regulation with optimal navigation, unified navigation, expansive navigation. Okay? And so we want there to be this one giant landmass where all of the trillions of networks 
are able to connect, communicate, and collaborate so that all of the parts of the self, little, little people, <laughs> so that all of the parts of the self can live on a big, beautiful landmass together and have access to everything that exists on that landmass and have access to connecting with all of each other. Okay. And so an important thing to note is that as there are new levels of what you might call integration, parts of the self are not being diminished. It's not like there's these parts of the self and these parts of the self, and now they're connected. So now there's just this part of the self. It's not how it works. There's these parts of the self, these parts of the self. The goal is to have a bridge so they can hang out. But all the parts of the self, they still all exist. And all the regions of the body-mind, they still all exist. We're just trying to improve the content and expand the connectivity, okay? So let's say in this body-mind, most of these islands are like desert and barren and there's no plants, there's no animals, there's no food, there's no clean water. And so the people on them are like, this sucks. <laughs> I'm alone on an island. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to enjoy. And my needs aren't being met. I don't have, I, I don't have these fancy palm trees and I don't get to go play with wild deer. And like, I, I don't get to know other people because I'm here by myself on this barren, barren, tiny island. Okay. But once you improve and expand the content and connectivity, then the island is thriving and there's all these different plants and there's all these different animals and there's all these waterfalls and there's all these beautiful mountains and there's all these fun things to see and to do. And then all the parts of the self are there. So then there's like trillions of other self aspects get to like run around and play with. Okay. And this is in the body mind beyond awareness. These are the structures beyond awareness. Okay. And so all of the regions of the body mind still exist. There's still the equal amount of land masses an equal amount of land. But now, they're not independent from each other. They still have distinction, but they now have connection also. And with improved content, then the islands aren't barren anymore. Then we plant seeds and there's beautiful palm trees and beautiful flowers. And, and you know, as the islands start to have bridges with each other, then these beautiful mountains and waterfalls form and all kinds of cool stuff happens. And then all the people on the island get to meet all the other people on the islands. And they're not alone from each other. They're not isolated. They're not independent from each other. They're not separate from each other anymore. Okay, but this is what's happening beyond awareness. So when you're in a process of integration or having reunifications or homecomings between self aspects and, and reconnecting these structures in the body mind, it's not like there's this part of the self and this part of the self or this part of the body mind, this part of the body mind, and now they're connected and you change the information in it. So now there's just like this thing and, and none of that exists anymore. Okay. Parts of the self get to meet each other and have new ways of connecting. Okay. If they are parts of the body mind that you're actually trying to shape shift, then you might have this structure, this structure, and they actually become something totally different. But that is not the self. Okay. Body mind might shape shift. It might change. It might totally be refurbished. But the parts of the self are always still the parts of the self. How they experience themselves in life might change because the structures they're flowing through might change. Okay. So anyway, so if you're trying to look at just like, I have this one island that's disrupting navigation. I want to work directly with that island. I want to see what navigational patterns are there and I want to transmute, shape, shift, and resculpt that. Then you can focus on looking at navigational patterns, especially unconscious memories in relation with attachment well-being that carry patterns of feeling and movement deep in the body-mind. But if there's a bunch of different islands and maybe they're causing implicit health challenges and disrupting navigation and regulation, or maybe you just want a fresh lease on life and you want to experience life with improved navigation and regulation, even if there's not like major disruptions, then you want to re-sculpt all of them simultaneously. But in order to do that, you can't look at them directly because if you're looking at a thousand different islands, 
how do you actually work with all that information simultaneously? As soon as you look at one, then you're looking over at another and you're no longer looking at that one. So how do you re-sculpt them all simultaneously? And so when we work with social self-engagement practices or different styles of directly focusing on the attachment systems at the foundation of the body mind, the foundation of which all of this is built, it's kind of like going deeper into the foundation of all of this stuff and be like, okay, how is how are these islands actually like sitting in the water? How are these islands actually sitting in the water? And what's affecting them? You know, are there underwater earthquakes that are shaking the stuff and causing the land masses to move away from this other land mass? Are there things happening that are that are break, you know, breaking off the pieces of land and, and the islands getting smaller? Are there things that are happening to make the island get bigger and farther away? What's actually happening deeper in the land masses that are sitting in the water under the surface beyond what you obviously see? It's kind of like that, but with the body mind, or if it's like a house, instead of just looking at, you know, the crack in the baseboard, you go to the foundation and realize that crack in the baseboard is because the foundation of the house was shifting and only showing up in something obvious, but the actual cause was much deeper. So if we go deeper than just the navigational patterns, we go deeper than just the surface clues. If we go deeper than the past experiences that have created it then we can actually work with the foundational structures of the body-mind. And when we work with attachment systems, all of this data throughout trillions of networks, all of the explicit, implicit data, all, all of the data from each year of life, all of the data throughout the neurobiological social engagement system with a bunch of different roles that have different navigational priorities beyond awareness. All of the abstract associations of every experiential element in existence, real or imagined. All the different self-associations from every period of life that are now affecting present moment realities and how the self associates with all components of reality based on self-associations in the body-mind. The content and connectivity of all of that flowing throughout trillions of energetic pathways are simultaneously re-sculpted. The content is upgraded and improved with better navigation and the connectivity is expanded. So now all that improved navigation can connect, communicate, and collaborate in new ways. And among the infinite potentials, this is where you might get the opportunity to have the ability to connect ideas in new ways. And that's been something really fun for me to experience. Every time I have a leap where I'm connecting stuff in my brain in new ways, all the different things that I've been learning through my implicit revelations case study can actually come together in new ways. And it's very, really cool and exciting and very rewarding. And so in the process of upgrading the navigation and regulation of the body mind, improving and expanding the content and connectivity throughout these trillions of energetic pathways, then implicit health challenges can achieve complete resolution, even if there's like a hundred different simultaneous health challenges. If they are all stemming from some form of disrupted navigation and regulation, they can all be healed simultaneously, effectively, and enjoyably without directly working with the implicit health challenge that is directly observable. All the implicit health challenges can achieve total absolute resolution with these techniques and approaches and concepts and self aspects are able to have greater sense of unity, connection, loving liberation, divine expansion, fuller expression. And that is a beautiful, 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 beautiful journey. No matter what your experience is with implicit health or anything like that, that's a beautiful journey to be on no matter what. And then there's this expanded potential of the body-mind to navigate and regulate its own existence in new ways. And that really paves the way to open the doors for personal evolution, personal growth, personal development, awakening, ascension, embodiment, expansion, learning new things, being a fuller expression of all of you, expanding into higher potentials and bigger dreams, whatever it might be, whatever it might be having more fulfilling relationships, whatever your focus is right now.
okay? So it, resolving implicit health challenges, having deeper unity and connection with all parts of the self, and expanding into fuller potentials of various aspects of personal experience from the inside out. So there's a lot of reasons that this can really be a game changer along any healing journey of loving liberation through life. Okay, so to bring it all together, any moment of unfulfilled attachment needs or any moments where attachment needs are fulfilled from alternate sources in contradictory ways can cause islands to develop. And every time those islands are activated, then that data is navigating life and its existing data is being resculpted and the new experience is adding to that island. And the more that it's independently activated beyond awareness, the bigger the island gets and the farther away it gets from the primary land masses that are navigating life with greater connection with more parts of the self. And then there could be a few islands that are pretty big and pretty far away from each other, or there could be like hundreds of pretty small islands that are in closer distance or anything in between. But at this point in our evolution, a lot of people are experiencing these body-mind islands, but they don't necessarily know about it because a lot of times it doesn't present itself in obvious ways. And even if it did, you might not understand what's actually happening or what to do about it. Sometimes it's really obvious and it's like this major implicit health disruption. Sometimes, most of the time, it's a lot more subtle and it might be reducing the quality of life, but in ways that don't seem significant enough to put your full attention to maybe. Okay, and then there's parts of the self who are on the island experiencing all of that. And the goal is to improve and expand content and connectivity so parts of the self can have greater connection and a fuller experience of life. In terms of applying these concepts to positively benefit personal experience from the inside out, you can A, look directly at specific navigational patterns, especially if you're wanting to transform a very specific disruption of implicit health. You can B, work with attachment systems in direct relation with navigational patterns, which could look like assessing the navigational patterns and seeing which system of internal attachment needs they're most affiliated with, and then sculpting new unconscious memories in relation with those particular attachment needs to influence those navigational patterns. Okay, so it's kind of the bridge between the specific navigational patterns and just abstract uh, attachment systems. Or three, you can work exclusively with attachment systems without looking at the navigational structures at all and build a brand new foundation of the whole body-mind and work with all of the systems of navigation simultaneously without looking directly at their specific information. And my modalities, practices, techniques, methods, concepts, journeys, everything work with these three intentions and fulfill them effortlessly and enjoyably, effectively and efficiently. So you kind of get to just like kick back and like enjoy the journey and like enjoy these conversations and explore the concepts and then have these simple, fun, easy practices to apply. And it gets the job done more efficiently and effectively working deep, 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 deep in these structures of the body, mind, beyond awareness than you could ever imagine. And you get to enjoy the journey and you get to enjoy every step of the journey, not just when you reach the destination of resolving that implicit health challenge or resculpting your entire body mind from the ground up. Every step of the journey is rewarding and fulfilling as you are investing in those intentions. And so three different methods, okay? Working with navigational structures and attachment systems in different layers of specificity and generality to achieve different directives or intentions, objectives. Okay, you can work directly with navigational patterns. You can work with specific attachment systems in correlation with the navigational patterns, or you can work with all attachment systems to influence all the navigational patterns without looking at them. Okay, and the goal is to improve and expand content and connectivity to improve the quality and connection for parts of the self beyond awareness, knowing that approximately 99.08% of inner realities exist and operate beyond direct perception and immediate awareness. 
please feel free to explore my other libraries of work. I have lots of free video libraries and free gifts, my Implicit Revelations case study, a wide collection of free gifts, downloads, miniature playbooks, all kinds of magic. Um, and then I also have introductory playbooks. So these are also free and they are to share the offerings of my monetized gifts. But the introductory playbooks alone have a lot of insight. So even if you don't choose to invest in that deeper dive with my work, you can still explore those free introductory playbooks and gain a lot of insight and maybe use some of that introspection on your journey. And then if you do wanna dive deeper, I have one-time sacred soul sessions with lots of different potential focal points, uh, whether you wanna work with attachment systems or resolving an implicit health challenge or understanding implicit health better, or you wanna work directly with the inner child, uh, directly or indirectly through energies of consciousness, and flowing through specific body-mind structures, um, or specifically with aspects from childhood. Um, well, you can do treasure trove tete tates exploring the experience and expression of divine consciousness flowing through the body mind through the liberated consciousness diagram and its treasure mapping potentials. There's treasure mapping for your body mind. Um, there's also treasure mapping for your body mind and the body mind of a loved one to see how your body minds are affecting communication and interactions with each other. And um, there's marathons. There's all kinds of amazing stuff through one time sacred soul sessions. There's also multi month personalized programs at three different levels of the depth of which you're diving into. The first one is to resolve an implicit health challenge. The second one is for liberating expanding consciousness. You're really diving deep into understanding all of your experiences and transforming them from the inside out, not to change something, but to expand everything. And then there's marathons at the most complex layer and level through my original subconscious unveiling and transformation techniques. And then if you want to dive into any of these ideas through a self-guided journey that can also be a lifelong reference book. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart because it's been half a decade and I still use these playbooks as, you know, I'm constantly referring back to them, constantly, you know, learning and applying these stuff in deeper ways. So they can really be this lifelong reference book, uh, even once you move through the self-guided journey aspect of it. And uh, there's dozens of different offerings for those as well uh, with greater depths and levels. Um, if you want just, you know, a, a simplified miniature playbook versus a full feature course, uh, if you want to be investing for a few months versus a few years, if you want to just have a few handy tools and expanded awareness, or if you want to like understand and transform anything and everything, um, different layers you can dive into. The self-guided journeys are also utilizing different layers of these ideas, either working directly with navigational patterns, working with attachment systems specifically in relation with those navigational patterns, or working with all of the attachment systems to influence all the navigational patterns, but without directly looking at them. And so different playbooks connect with different ones. For example, Implicit Transformation does this one, and Self-Love Liberation does this one, and Creative Connections does this one, for example. Um, and so those three different things are ways that we can apply these insights and just having awareness of how experience is affecting us beyond what we directly perceive is really important. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Um, if this content benefits your journey, I do accept donations through PayPal. Uh, not expected, but always appreciated. And I also have a merchandise store. It's really fun with some uplifting uh, content, um, some fun little merchandise designs, over 100 original designs with mantra and different magical stuff. So that's another way that you can support your healing journey and support my work and contribute to the magic of the cosmos eternally spinning. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to do the thumbs up and leave a little what's up comment um, and subscribe to the channel. The interaction with my work allows it to grow and reach more people, which I always appreciate. And I always love getting to connect with you guys here. And if you want to dive deeper, you can explore my work in the video description below and each of the recent video uploads 
here on the channel, we'll also have updated uh, captions and stuff. And so as things grow and evolve and change, you can always check the video description on more recent videos to see the links to all the different offerings that I share. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thanks for exploring this work. And I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day.